know. I couldn't find my eagle shirt to, to add to, but you know, it's a, it'll be on by the time uh, my, my daughter and I become rivals. She's a good Oh, absolutely she is. There's no accounting for taste. Although I bet you I like the food and wine from Joe Montana. Oh, so do I. But, and so she'll be at my house. And we'll be rivals. Until the game is over. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Budtown United Methodist Church here in scenic downtown Budtown. Spreading metropolis. Yes. Some of our announcements today. Our greeter was Don Seward. Thank you, Don. And last week's attendance was 36. 
The coin uh, jar donations for January will go to the Burlington County Animal Shelter. Altar flowers are given to the glory of God. Bible study will start Thursday, February 9th at 9.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. A six-week study by Adam Hamilton, Luke, Jesus and the Outsiders, Outcasts and Outlaws. Sign up. <laughs> Sheet for books is in the back of the sanctuary. Sign up for a book by Sunday, January 29th. Today. That'd be today. Yes, today. Uh, dates to remember. Bible study in Hargrove Hall, Adam Hamilton, Luke, Jesus, and the Outsiders, Outcasts and Outlaws, 9.30 and 6.30. February 10th is the Covered Dish Dinner. That's in Hargrove Hall at 6.30. And um, we do have a new greeter list for 2023, which will be posted in the back. And also, Courtney would like to thank everyone who donated to her uh, cause. You're welcome, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it seems that we have a birthday. Uh -huh. I don't know if I'm forgetting anything, but I think I'm on the birthday section. <laughs> and that birthday is Fred Doyle, Fred's two, <laughs> on the second. Before we move forward, are there any other announcements anyone wants to bring up, mention? Okay. So our gathering chorus is found on in the Faith We Sing on page 2025. Please stand if you wish. And I got permission to use As the deer. <laughs> to use them. <laughs> Trust in the Lord and do good. May the Lord give strength to the people. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is our refuge and strength. Our hymn of praise is leaning on the everlasting arms found in your hymnal on page 133.
seated. My physical therapist would be proud of me for that. <laughs> You may be seated, Pastor. <laughs> our hymn of praise, I'm, I'm sorry, our opening prayer. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. As, As the sun, sun rises, so does our prayers, prayers loving God. God. With, with each new dawn, Renew our trust in you, our delight to do you justice, and our gladness to be in your presence. Amen. Betty, you're up. Well, I was going to sit, play the Eagles song, but I thought that would be really inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, I don't really know it, so. <laughs> but I will play uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Praise is Psalm 15. It's found on page 747 of your hymnal. O Lord, who shall abide in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? The one who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth from the heart. Who does not slander with the tongue and does no evil to a friend? nor takes up a reproach against a neighbor. In whose eyes the reproach is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord. Who does not put out money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent? The one who knows the saints shall never be moved.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. This morning, the Episcopal lesson is for today is 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 31. And it can be found in the found on page 166 in the New Testament of your few Bibles. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discontent of the disconcerning, I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is, his, where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since it's the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through the wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believed. The Jews demanded signs and the Greeks demanded wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are, are the called, called Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than the human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than the human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many, not many of you were by human standards. Not many more power, were powerful. Not many were the, of noble birth. But God chose that the foolish in the world to shame and wise. God chose that it is weak, excuse me, in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce in nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and, sac and, sac and sacclamation and redemption, in order that it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. May God bless the reading of this word. Amen.
gospel lesson for today is Matthew 5, 1 to 12. This can be found on page 4 in the New Testament of your pew Bible. Please stand if you wish. <clears throat> when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they are persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please remain standing and turn to page 314 in your hymnal as we sing in the garden, page 314.
may be seated. It's funny you can always tell a hymn that everybody knows because they sing out loud on it <laughs> and clear. <laughs> I, th I, thought, I thought that's what you were doing. <laughs> well, we started last week to follow Jesus on his travels and his ministry. He's just starting out his ministry. Now, we are walking along with him in the area still by the Sea of Galilee. Now, let's see what happens next. Let's see what he's going to get into. Jesus has gotten quite a following. He has selected his disciples, and his reputation has gotten around. People of all ages and backgrounds are flocking to see and hear him speak. But sometimes Jesus was overwhelmed by the size of the crowd. Almost like me with Facebook and, you know, it, it, yeah, no. Um, Jesus saw the crowd forming and went up on a hill where there was a clearing. His disciples gathered around him. Here's where he preached his famous Sermon on the Mount and delivered the Beatitudes. Now, according to, I'm going to, uh, According to Brett Blair, Brett Blair is a pastor who writes for Sermons.com, okay? And I've been, I've been following Sermons.com lately to get ideas. Um, he writes, some years ago, the Raleigh, North Carolina News and Observer published an article entitled, How Do You Measure Up as a Man? All right, guys, so this is all for us today, right? You'll understand why as we go along. Uh, after some extensive research, <clears throat> they came up with a list. And it reads something like this. Number one, his ability to make and conserve money. All right, I failed already. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. But, okay, number two, the cost, style, and age of his car. Number three, uh, how much hair he has. Failure number two. <laughs> That's gone. <laughs> his strength and size which I've lost a lot of since the heart problems. You know, it just hasn't returned back. And maybe it'll stay away for a while. The job he holds and how successful he is at it. Right? <laughs> Hopefully I'm good with that. Okay. The sports he likes. <laughs> How many clubs he belongs to? Yeah, I don't think I Nay. Nay. <laughs> and his aggressiveness and reliability. They are, the, they are the eight top things that makes a man, according to the observer. <laughs> I only missed out on two. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing good then, right? Okay. Now... I have, um, at many funerals, asked, and, and, and I have, how do you express how wealthy a person is? Is it the house they live in? No. The amount of money in their wallet? No. The car they drive? No. No, not at all. It is the amount of love they received and the love they gave back. That's how you judge the value of a person, whether they're rich or poor. Okay. That's what makes someone wealthy and successful in this life. Now, Jesus preached to the crowd 
The crowd consisted of successful businessmen and those who were considered failures. There were those of all ages and races. But Jesus knew they were all there for the same reason. Must have been something I said. No. <laughs> they were all there for the same reason, all these people. They all wanted happiness. Don't we all? Aren't we the same way today? Don't we want happiness in our lives? Now think about it. What if Jesus was to come in today and preach the Beatitudes? Do you think he might change them into something like this? Blessed is the one who makes a fortune. Blessed is the one who makes six figures. Happy are they who has a palace in the city and a summer home in the mountains. Blessed is the one who has won the praises from his peers. Blessed is the woman who is recognized as a darling of society. Right? I don't think so. When Jesus taught the Beatitudes, he did not teach them to the crowd. The crowd was behind. They were, they were away from him. He taught them to his disciples, the disciples that were gathered around him. In some groups, they consider this the ordination service of the disciples. Think about it, okay? Jesus is delivering the Beatitudes to his disciples. And this is their ordination service. They're becoming preachers. He was giving them instructions on how to treat others and how to look at their differences as a tool to win their hearts toward God and to go preach the good news to the crowds they would encounter. Now, true happiness is not at all based on what we have. The true happiness is based upon what is inside of us. It is a feeling of love and warmth that we demonstrate to others and how they demonstrate it toward us. This is true happiness. I got true happiness with my wife. You know? Aww. Oh, I know. Oh, that was an awe moment. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll give you that one too. Yes, okay. Now, Jesus started the Beatitudes by saying, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, the Gospel of Luke's words is a little different. He puts it as, blessed are you poor. Now, this would then make those who are rich financially to walk away downhearted because they would feel they were they're not going to inherit any place in heaven. Blessed are the poor refers to those who are poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. Not in money, poor in spirit. The ones who feel there is no hope for them in their lives. They've lost their spirit. They've lost their hope. That's who the poor are. The rich thanks God for Matthew's rendition, and the poor thanks God for Luke's. So I don't think either using the Gospels to, uh, for their advantages are correct. You know, I just don't, it, it, it's, just not, it's just not there, you know? The other beatitude I'd like to highlight 
Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. When we become involved with someone who is mourning, we feel their pain and mourn with them. Together, we may find solace and comfort in the words we share. Many of us might even weep with them and become deep in their pain and anguish. How else would we be able to help them heal if we have never felt personal loss? That type of pain stays with you throughout your lives. We hurt with each other, but at the same time, we help each other by holding on to each other, hugging each other, sympathizing with each other. We are helping each other, and we're pulling each other out of those depths of darkness. We even mourn for the conditions we face in our country and in our world. We continue to pray to God for changes in our society and surroundings. When, we, when, when he answers these prayers, when we see and experience his miraculous work, do we stop and thank him or does this become something expected? Because, hey, let's face it, he's God. He's supposed to bless us with his power and graces. We believe in him. Isn't that enough? Isn't that what he's promised us? God has blessed us. Now think about it. He had only one son. This son, this one son, became the greatest teacher we could ever have and a savior we could follow. Let us continue to follow where he leads us without hesitation. Let us be the blessed ones he taught about and let us lend our hearts to our fellow followers who needs us at their darkest times. Be his light. Amen. So we get to go to our Lord in prayer. Um, we, uh, we need to start praying again for Ricky Gregory, who is out in California now, where they can't get to him to help, but he's having seizures again. So um, we ask for continued prayers for Ricky. Um, also, this is kind of an off the wall type thing, but then again, it's not. Um, at physical therapy, you know how you, when you go to physical therapy, you get to meet all kinds of people and, and hear of all kinds of problems. Well, yesterday, uh, I'm in physical therapy and, and this lovely lady, Sherry, comes in. And she says, did I hear you say you were a pastor? I said, well, yes. Yes, I am. She says, um, would you pray for me? And would you pray for Oliver? Oliver is her four-year-old dog. But Oliver is a serious diabetic. His pancreas isn't working. And they're running all kinds of tests and giving all kinds of shots and He's, Oliver's getting five, six insulin shots a day. 
So Sherry is doing everything she can to keep Oliver going. <laughs> but, but so, so she asked if we could pray for Oliver. So as I said, well, yes, and we'll pray for you too. So uh, like I said, it was kind of a little off the wall request, but on the other hand, it's really not. Um, this is, really, you know no, uh, I know, I know, this is her child. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to do it for her, you know. Um, Jeff Yago. Uh, he had his PET scan and they found no more cancer, so that's good, but they still do not know why he's bleeding in his eyes. Right. So, so there's. He's, he's got to go to a real body surgical center. Yeah. So, but he's. Right, he right. still has the blood cancer, but his numbers are good right now, so nothing new is developing, so that's good. They just don't know why he's going to be behind his eyes. So, continue prayers for his eyes. And, but praise God, the cancer's gone, you know? And thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. It will always happen if it's blood cancer. Yeah, it's blood it's cancer, like but it, remission, yeah, yeah. Um, do we have anyone else? Praise. Yes, praises for 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 <laughs> Phil. Um, you know, you got to knock it off. <laughs> wow. I'll try to be the highlight of it. I know. I know. I know. But you're doing good. Everything's. Everything's fine. Yes, thank you, God. All the time, God is good. That, um, that's a scary thing, because that clot could have dislodged. And it, 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 I'm, I'm hoping none went to the brain of man, but... <laughs> Aren't we all in that position too, Bill? So you're not alone on that one. But no, no we th definitely thank God that, that, that they were able to find it. They were able to cure it. And you're back with us again, and you're going to knock it off. You promised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have to pray about people worried about me with COVID. Yeah. Because of his health issues, but he he texted us. It's good, feeling better. So that that's a good thing. Yeah. Good, Short good, good. Sweet. Good, so, good. So we're very grateful. What? Well, Yes. Yes. Uh, I'll be able. To, we'll be able to ask him soon how he's doing in person. <laughs> Anyone else? Kathy Walter. Kathy Walter. Yes. Yes. Uh, I spoke to Kathy uh, last week. And, and the doctor told her quite a long time before she can come back out. Yep. Um, her immune system is just down. And, and we kind of know all the, no, no, no. So um, 
We'll continue to pray for Kathy, get her strong. Yes. Oh, Bob and Nellie. Yeah. Uh, I know Nellie has not been feeling good at all. Bob worries a lot about her. He does. Yes. And uh, physically, he got a good report from his doctor. Good. So good, good. So he's okay. He's staying strong as, as Nurse Cratchit. Um, <laughs> Bob is playing the nursemaid. Um, and and you know, you talk to you talk to Nellie and she turns around and she says, I wish he'd stop worrying about me and take care of himself. Well, you yeah, know darn right. Well, he's not going to. Yeah, no. Um, and that's just that's just Bob and Nellie. That's how they that's how they are. You know. It's but easier said than done. yes, yes, it is. It's easier said than done. I know. Um, hear that. <laughs> Is there anyone, anyone else that? Hell, Eagles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, although, uh, now wait a minute. Okay, um, okay, so I, I got to let the cat out of the bag. There is a 49ers fan that is with us today. But, <laughs> but we, yes, but we, we still love her and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we still love you, Emma. And it's okay, you know. Um, yeah, we'll forgive you this time anyway. No. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, there you go, cowboy. Yeah, yeah, a couple cowboy fans, and yeah, you know. Hey, you know what though? It's 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 kind of um a kind of a blessing that you can actually um, find happiness in rooting for your favorite sports team. I mean, it, it's but it, it's on my list. It's on my list. Finding true happiness. But no, it's true though, you know? I mean, think about it, you know? You, 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 well, you could... A common goal, right? I mean, you know, you could, you could um, sit and watch a Hallmark movie. Uh, yeah. I had to go there. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be soon enough. Think of all the stress you would be rid of. Yes. Yeah. All the happy endings. Yeah. Or a good western. There you go. There you go. If we all cheered the same team, what happened to this there? There'd be no competition. Exactly, exactly. There would be no exactly. Thank you. If we all cheered for the same team, there would be no competition. Well, it would be easier when it's your daughter that you're gonna be rivals with this afternoon. Uh, that's yeah, well, you know. And in the same living room, no less. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's okay, that's too. That's okay, though. That's okay, too. Um, yeah. Um, you know. Hey, I know that we have a 49ers fan that's going to be coming over this afternoon to the house to help us get through some of the, this, this one report for the, yeah. <laughs> so, so. 
<laughs> that's, that's due on Tuesday. So we'll have it done. And uh, uh, I think Emma's hoping that we can have it done before the game starts. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Um, no, that's always a good thing, though, you know? And, 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 and it just brings, other than the Hallmark Channel, the Eagles game just brings joy. Well, you know, I have to say Hallmark. Every once in a while, they'll have, have a good, good movie on. Just once in a while. Oh. <laughs> and I have to say, I mean, I'm not saying how, how, how far in between, but once in a while, Um, well, <laughs> they all end the same. <laughs> it's a happy ending. Yes. Some of them are happy all the way through. They kiss, it snows, the fireworks go off, oh, no. the leaves fall down. Not the two I watched recently, it did not snow. The one I watched recently, there was no kissing or anything. It depends on the season that you're in. Or the state you're in. Huh? Yeah. It doesn't snow in, in, doesn't area, snow in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to you later, because I missed one of them in the series. <laughs> well, okay, we're lo we lost track. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's. Uh, get it together again and let's bow our heads in prayer as we as we pray to our loving God oh heavenly father the words that your son taught us yes us because we are the disciples of Jesus we are on this journey with him and we are watching each and every step that he takes. And he taught us those wonderful words of the Beatitudes. And how we are to look at those around us and bless them through our actions, through our feelings, through our cares. God, we thank you, oh, so much for the words that Jesus taught us. We try to live by them. Oh, we fail. Absolutely, we fail. God, you know it. But you also created us, oh, God. And you know that we try. And we just, we just, Thank you, God, for giving us the, the lessons that we are able to take care of each other, to care for each other, have our concerns for each other, and comfort each other in our times of need, in our sorrow, in our grief. So, God, we thank you for our ability and our willingness that you have instilled in us to be able to do your works as your children. Now, God, we, we have those that are heavy on our hearts that we ask that you go and take care of. We ask you to be with Ricky as he's having issues again and we just ask you God to work with the doctors and cure Ricky so that he doesn't have all these problems again God we just ask you to wrap your loving arms around him and around his family as they worry as they worry about him yet they cannot get to him to help and we want Ricky to know that we all love him. We're all praying for him. And we're all reaching our arms out to hug him also. So God, we just 
ask you to be with him and his family. We ask you to be with Sherry and her little companion, Oliver. She is worried sick over him. She has good veterinary care for him, but she is still concerned, as any of us who are pet owners would be. So, God, we just ask you to, to comfort, comfort her, guide the vet, and bring some good healing to little Oliver so that he will be safe again. We thank you, oh God, for test results that came back on our friend Jeff Yago that his cancer is still in remission, but now he has this bleeding behind the eyes and they have to figure out what's going on with that. So he's going to be seen by specialists and, and try to get him straightened out. We thank you, oh God, for your being there to heal our brother Bill and to have him able to come back to us strong, sharing his God-given talents, his voice. And we just thank you, oh God, for, for, for bringing him through. And we thank you, oh God, for keeping Louise comforted. As we know that you are at work. And with Bill's brother and sister, that they worried, we're so happy that he is now well again. And he has promised to knock off getting sick. <laughs> God, we know you'll help him with that. <laughs> God, we, 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 we thank you for uh, Dave Smith, who is feeling better. He's getting over this COVID. He's getting stronger every day. And we just thank you, oh God, for healing him, and keeping Cheryl healthy, and being with his sisters as they worried about him and his brother. And we just thank you, oh God, for, for, for being there, being there with all of them. We thank you for intervening in Kathy Walter's life and getting her feeling better, getting her stronger day by day. And we know that soon, very soon, as soon as the doctors say it's okay, that she will be back in this, your house of worship, to be with us and worshiping you, O oh God. So bring her back strong and healthy. And then we ask you, O oh God, to be with Bob and Nellie as Nellie still has her bouts and, and trying to get acclimated to the medication that they've changed and put her on. And, and we thank you, O oh God, that she's getting stronger and feeling a little better day by day. We still miss them. And we thank you, O oh God, for your keeping Bob lifted up, keeping him healthy, getting good results for, for him so that he can continue to take care of Nellie, the love of his life. So God, we also thank you for hearing our unspoken prayers and that you are with us every step of our way. So God, we thank you for you your, your, your gift of your only son who came into this world not to condemn the world, but to save it. We thank you for his love and mercies. And we thank you, O oh God, for the words that he taught us when we asked how to pray to you by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. It is also a pleasure to be able to give back to our God some of the gifts that he has given us. And so I will ask... Or, what? Oh! Well, we'll get somebody... Well, we'll get somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll ask one usher and the other one's coming if they will come forward to help us with today's tithes and offerings. Take the trash in the police. Okay, well, we've got one. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, God bless these gifts and bless the gifts. God, we ask you to bless these gifts, bless the givers, and may they be used to strengthen your kingdom here on earth. May it be a blessing to the poor in spirit, for we can be there for them. We ask this through the blessed name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing if you wish. And open your hymnals to page 467. Uh, I'm not going to go there. Trust and obey. 467. What was all that about? <clears throat> I'm not going there. <laughs> Another one.
catch that? Happiness in Jesus? True happiness. Let us find that true happiness. Let us feel it. And then as we go into the world, share that true happiness. And lift somebody up. Somebody who needs to be lifted. God only knows.